This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the ASUS ROG Strix Scar 18. That is their 2024 edition of their flagship gaming laptop. You can get it with an RTX 4080 or a 4090 Intel 14 generation Core i9 is inside. But what's the most important here, if you really don't want to watch the whole video, you want to know what's new from last year, a mini LED display with over 2,000 local dimming zones, which means really excellent display. And the standard memory is doubled to 32 gigs from 16 gigs. There's a lot more to know about this, of course. So we're going to look at it now. Okay, so in case you're not all up to date on ASUS's gaming laptop models, the Tough Line is a more budget line, but among the ROG models, there are a lot of lines and we reviewed several of them, like the Zephyrus line, which is the thin and light line, and tends to have some of the creature comforts you might expect to see on a mobile workstation or an Ultrabook or something like that. And then there's the G-Series, which sits in between. You're getting more performant there, but not the fanciest of the stuff, the highest in GPUs and stuff. And then there is the Rogue or ROG Strix and Strix SCAR models, the SCAR being the highest. So it's available in 16 and 18 inch sizes. And though this is their highest line model, it's not as expensive as some of their competitors. Well, obviously compared to Razer Blade, who's always the most expensive, but uh, even when you're looking at MSI and like the Titan, which is also a bigger, heavier machine, maybe think about the Raider more. Uh, the pricing isn't that bad for these. With a 4080, it's about $3,000. You can get it with a 4090. I say it is just not worth that usually you see maybe $500 difference, which even then is pushing it for the performance gains. But in this case, it's $900 more to get a 4090. So just, I would say, don't do that. It, it, you get a two terabyte SSD instead of a one terabyte. That's the only other improvement. So yeah, 4080, sweet spot, great performance. That's the one that we have here. So the big difference this year, Intel fourth generation CPUs are just in the HX category of gaming CPUs are just a refresh. So that means pretty much it's the same as the 13th gen CPU, just clocked 100 megahertz higher. And it's not like Ultrabooks and the thin and light gaming laptop CPU that we're seeing with Intel Meteor Lake, which was a big architectural change. So not really much to see here. If you have last year's model, be happy. You won't be tempted to spend money for that. And obviously Nvidia is still on the same tier of GPUs that they were for last year. The difference here is that mini LED display, 18 inches QHD plus resolution, so 2560 by 1600. That's a 240 hertz display. They say it's three milliseconds. So what's the big deal? Mini LED, man, I'm kind of in love with them. Now, when they came out last year, like in the ASUS ROG Zephyrus M16 that we reviewed, they had 1,000 local dimming zones, now up to 2,000, so that's nice. But, I, you know, Windows and Microsoft wasn't quite ready for it, and there was some kind of weird behaviors. You have to tweak and fiddle with it a bit just to get the display to behave the way you want it. That's all ironed out now for the most part, and it is nice. I, in fact, I'm using Windows 11 HDR mode on this to great effect. It looks good. It's not blown out. It's not weird. It improves things, but the display lineup in ASUS's gaming laptop tier is, is interesting, right? You would think OLED's still the very best. No, for them, that's the mid tier. You have your IPS at the bottom, the OLEDs in the middle, like with the, the G series gaming laptops, and then the mini LEDs on the top of the line ones, because there's a lot to say that's good about them, including the fact they get way brighter than OLED. They also don't have a burn-in problem. So, I mean, this is HDR 1000 rated display. So, bright. And when we measure with our colorimeter, and this is even taxing for today's colorimeters to measure, in HDR mode, we did measure 731 nits, and in SDR mode, still 511 nits. So they get a lot brighter than OLED, which means even higher effective contrast. When you see this where our measurements were on screen, you're going to notice that the contrast ratios are higher than what we measure on some OLEDs when it's running in HDR mode, because obviously it can get brighter and the black levels still achieve that 0.01 near blackness. And even in SDR mode, 0.04. So super close to inky black and 2000 plus dimming zones means it's local dimming, just like they have on TVs, right? So it does it in 2000 little zones. So you might not get per pixel level like you do on OLED, but it's small enough that on the screen of this side, you're not going to see haloing. By the way, this is also available in 16 inch for those of you who want a smaller form factor and a little bit lighter weight. But anyway, it's a wonderful looking display and I do suggest turning on Windows HDR mode and you can even have it apply HDR to SDR games if you wish to do so. But it's a nice experience without the OLED eye strain, that low 
refresh PWM without the burn-in considerations. And if you need to use it in a bright place, good. And also it's a matte display, whereas most OLEDs still are glossy, so reflections are an issue. So big selling point, that's new for this year. So, I mean, manufacturers had to come up with something this year that was better than last year, given the fact that the CPU and the GPUs really are not changing much, right? The other thing, like I said, is it used to get 16 gigs of RAM stock, and now it's 32 gigs. That's DDR5, it's 5600 megahertz, two RAM slots, you can upgrade it yourself to 64 if you want. So that's nice to get a little bit more for your money, but it, it's not the hugest thing either. Uh, one terabyte PCIe4 SSD is standard. If you do go for the 4090, you get a two terabyte. We have Intel AX11 Wi-Fi 6E, not Wi-Fi 7 yet on this, and Bluetooth 5.3. One thing to mention though, see premium laptop, fancy pants, right? And you expect Illumina everywhere. Now, if you go with something like the Zephyrus line, which again is the one that tries to be more chic instead, you'll get nice metal surfaces everywhere. With this one, with this line, it's ever, yes, you, the, the lid is aluminum on this and the rest is plastic. They embrace the plastic. You have that translucent clear top deck for the keyboard deck area and around the sides to say, hello, this is plastic, but we're going to make it interesting and look kind of cool. I am okay with it because I want the most performance possible for my gaming, right? And the pretty stuff, it's nice to have if I'm made of money, you know, but it's not going to change my game, is it? So I'm okay with the decision they make because I'm getting more performance for my buck than I would for some other brands. Now, some things I will complain about a little bit is for, you know, what these cost. There's not cheap Cheetos, obviously, and we have a 720p webcam, I mean, and no Windows Hello IR camera. Again, you can look to like the Zephyrus if you want a Windows Hello IR camera, and no fingerprint scanner. Now, the only reason I'm sort of okay with that is because I've never had any luck with Asus's fingerprint scanners on their laptops, but still, it would be nice to see that for this top tier. Keyboard, they stopped using the low-profile mechanical keyboards a while ago in the strict scar line, which I kind of miss, but this is a very tactile and crisp keyboard. I like it for gaming, I like it for typing, and of course it's per-key RGB, and you can use Aura Sync with it, and there's some L LDD body lighting going on too. And the trackpad is a reasonably large enough size, and it works, well, just fine. So what about performance then? Again, don't expect it to change much from last year, but the performance on this is excellent. They've been doing a really good job with cooling. You get liquid metal on the CPU and the GPU. You've got three fans inside and a well-designed heat sink and ventilation system. I would expect even the 16 inch to do pretty decently on this. I mean, that's enough of a chassis size for cooling. Uh, the, there, there's not a game I could throw at it playing at native QHD plus resolution, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. That's why it's the plus for the QHD. I'm uh, running Ray Tracing Ultra, and every game was just doing wonderfully on this. Even Cyberpunk, and we did not have frame generation turned on for the footage that you're seeing. I'm playing something like Metro Exodus Enhanced, going like to 120, 130 frames per second in Ray Tracing Ultra. I mean, nice. And okay, you're thinking, okay, so is it Lattice Vacuum Cleaner? Is it going to burn the hairs off my legs? No. The cooling is very effective on this. And that's nice because, you know, Intel typically runs a little higher wattage, a little hotter than AMD, for example. You can see, again, in the gaming footage, their CPU and GPU are just hanging around 75 centigrade. So that is excellent stuff. I did all of my tests for both benchmarks and for gaming on ASUS's performance mode, not ultimate. I mean, you can go with that one. Performance is high enough and you get really good performance and the noise is really not bad. It's quite a bit quieter than some of the Lenovo Legions that we reviewed, for example, and some of the Alienwares. So it's something I don't have to wear headphones with and I don't get dirty looks when there's somebody else in the room while I'm playing a game. So it's well managed. They're doing a good job with that given the performance level. Now, speaking of AMD Ryzen, we've also reviewed the Hey, the, the, the last year's version of that with the 7945HX, and that was the Rogue Strix Scar 17, which still gets treated like a second-class citizen. That one didn't have a million LED, didn't get the new aspect ratio. What they're going to do this year, I don't know. That one still, in terms of CPU performance, even beats this one. So if you care about that above all else, well, that's still on the market and available to you, but you're not going to get the nice display, yada, yada, that sort of thing. And also it runs a little bit hotter, but not really louder because ASUS is really on their cooling game. Now, speaking of performance mode or ultimate mode, Armory Crate is on here. This is ASUS's Game Command Center software. Now, everybody hates everybody's gaming software, right? Alienware Command Center gets attacked, MSI, who renames theirs every so often, whatever it's called now. Uh, everybody gets picked on. I have no issues with Armory Crate. If you really hate it, you can install G Helper, which is a free 
open source app that you can get instead, but it is where you can set your fan profiles or choose the performance levels. And also one thing about the mini LED display, ASUS is doing and not many others, is that you can choose multi-zone or single zone. Why is that important? If you want single zone backlight, it behaves like an IPS display. So if you care about extreme color accuracy and contrast accuracy, at least relative to what most people will see who don't have mini LED or OLED displays, you can put it in that mode, which is nice. So that's another thing that you do inside of Armory Crate and control your RGB settings for your keyboard and all that sort of stuff, you know, like all the gaming command center stuff. The laptop has G-Sync in Advanced Optimus. It has a MUX switch on board and it has a Thunderbolt 4 port, a USB-C port on board, both of which support DisplayPort out and support G-Sync, two USB-As, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, a headphone jack, yay that, and HDMI 2.1. So connectivity on this is pretty good. Now, one thing that, especially you, you right-handed people won't like, both of the USB-As are on the right-hand side. So that means you get a bunch of cord there if you're using a wired mouse on the right hand side. And still Asus is doing that thing where the power barrel pin adapter connects on the side of the laptop and it's almost midway down. So uh, that can be a little bit fiddly and I'm always moving it to make sure it doesn't block the fan vents on the side, that sort of thing. It's the way they've laid out their motherboard. Speaking of the charger, it comes with a compact 330 watt charger. I imagine that's a GAN charger because it's well, it's compact, and ASUS has been using that with just about every large laptop that they've been selling. And you get a 90 watt hour battery, which means there's some hope of actually maybe going more than two hours on a charge for productivity work. Say you're taking this to school or to the office or wherever it is, that sort of thing, and you're not gaming on it. And um, for that kind of use, now obviously mini LED can get really bright, but this is with setting the display to 200 nits of brightness. I was getting about three and a half hours on, which for a very powerful gaming laptop desktop replacement class, par for the course. All right, to get inside the bottom cover, all visible Phillips head screws. The front ones are shorter. The one in the front corner here is a captive screw, which means doesn't, you don't have to pull it out and it'll lift it up a little bit to help you pry. And it's a bit of work to pry it apart, honestly, but yeah, you can do it. And we have the usual Asus ROG kind of lettering going on and other stuff, Easter eggs, and your speaker grills right there. By the way, the speakers are quite good. It's got four speakers, smart amp, and I, it's, it's nice. It's good stuff. You can actually hear it certainly above the fans and it has some bass. And then when we take this off, there's some ventilation actually through here. And these letters are ventilation and over here, these are not. Anyway, here's the internals. Alrighty, so 90 watt hour battery, that's very compact. That's a dense battery. The speaker driver's floating over here. And we've got the three fan cooling solution. Again, liquid metal under CPU and GPU. And the RAM is under this cover right here. And there are two RAM slots. Again, 32 gigs of RAM is standard. Ours happens to have Samsung RAM, DDR5, 5600 megahertz. And you have two M.2 2280 full-size card slots. I've added a second drive to this, so that's why both of these slots are full. And the Wi-Fi card here is socketed, but it, it does lie under the SSD right here. So there's sandwich on top. Happily, the SSD does not seem to affect connectivity because mostly that's dependent on the antennas which route out along these lines over here. And that ends our tour of the internals. So that's the ASUS ROG Strix SCAR 18 for 2024 with the mini LED display now being a standard feature there. As you can tell, I like it a lot. In terms of value, in terms of performance, what you're getting without some of the bells and whistles, like an all metal build and stuff like that, uh, that's what I'm looking for, but we're all different. Some of you may not be. Uh, Overall, the, the, the heat on this well-managed performance is top notch on this. The noise is really not there for a gaming laptop. I'm not hearing any coil whine either on this one. Uh, it's certainly a nice machine. And we're gonna be looking at some other 2024 gaming models soon. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.